Shop sign I and link your subscription. Cultural comment. Reacting to the Louis the 100th K revelations. By Emily Nuz on November 9, 2017. For many of CK's fans, he's been not just a creative figure, but a role model, specifically because he tells the kinds of stories that are taboo and shameful. Photograph by Angela Lewis Knit Redux. Here's one thing that I'm not concerned about right now, the question of what today's revelations do to the artistic legacy of Lewis the 100th.K. For certain fans of CK's work, and I include myself among them, the stories that just appeared in the New York Times are not entirely a surprise. Those rumors, in particular the ones about him masturbating in front of younger female comedians, have circulated in various forms, online and off and through extended private conversations in what we've all been calling the Whisper Network, for many years. And those waves got much stronger when Tig Notaro, a hugely talented comedian who has a professional relationship with Lewis, began speaking publicly about her break with him. A few months ago, Notaro filmed an episode on her Amazon series One Mississippi that felt inspired by the CK rumors, a decision that was particularly unusual. Because Lewis the 100th.K, his partner Blair Breard, and his manager, Dave Becky, were all producers on the show, their names in the opening credits. I wrote about all of this in my review of One Mississippi, in which I praised the scenes, described the rumors, and added, a TV review can't investigate rumors, that's a job for other forms of journalism. Now, in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein revelations, those rumors have been investigated. Melina Rizik, Kara Buckley, and Jody Cantor reported on several stories involving CK. The first is about Dana Min Goodman and Julia Woloff, comedy partners who appeared at the U.S. Comedy Arts Festival in Aspen, Colorado, in 2002. The two comedians went to CK's hotel room after their set to hang out in a collegial way. To their shock, he pulled out his penis and masturbated in front of them. When they ran out of the room after he ejaculated, he called out, which one is Dana, and which one is Julia? Soon after they began telling other people this story, Becky, CK's powerful manager, allegedly told them to keep their mouths shut. Becky told the Times that he never threatened anyone. The second story is about Rebecca Corey, who did a TV pilot that CK appeared in, in 2005. CK asked to masturbate in front of her too, and after she said no, disgusted, she reported it to her producers, including Courtney Cox and David Arquette. CK apologized to Corey, as he did to several of these women, saying he was sorry for pushing her into a bathroom, which Corey says never happened, and suggests that there are other stories that haven't been told. A comedy writer, performer, an illustrator named Abby Shachner also describes hearing CK masturbating on the phone, without her consent, as the two talked. And an anonymous woman describes him asking to masturbate in front of her, when he was a producer and a writer on the Chris Rock show, which she said yes to, but came to question later. I think the big piece of why I said yes was because of the culture, she said. He abused his power.